Hi guys and welcome to another video. Now, last night did that even happen? That was absolutely mental. So of course last night I did really, really late post a video and it was basically just sort of confirming, even though it was 99.9% .9%, uh, sure that Defoe was going to be re-signing for us. I wanted to just make something before I went to bed and sort of packed it in. But then of course the second I uploaded that video, I mean the second Sunderland immediately uh, <laughs> announced um, that we had signed Jay Matete from Fleetwood. And I'd already turned up a PC and everything. I was getting into bed and I just thought, no, I can't be bothered making a video about it. And then, of course, it started uh, weighing on my mind that I don't want to miss the Jermaine Defoe announcement. So from there, I was just laying in bed, staring at my phone until stupid o'clock in the morning, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. And then eventually, they do release the video that uh, was a, a really, really emotional um, sort of 30, 40 second video welcoming Jermaine's return and of course confirming in the process that Jermaine Defoe has returned to the club. So what a night it was, what a night. It was absolutely mental, particularly across social media. I strangely feel hungover this morning when all I was doing was drinking cups of tea last night. God, it feels like some kind of weird fever dream. But anyway, yeah, so in this video what we're going to do, we're going to go through everything that did happen yesterday and then just my thoughts about the transfer window, the whole January transfer window in general. So first and foremost, we will start with the beginning of yesterday, transfer deadline day, where it was confirmed that Aidan O'Brien will be leaving to Pompey. So we'll have a quick look over the Sunderland statement for this one. So Sunderland AFC can confirm that Aidan O'Brien has joined Portsmouth. The 28-year-old forward moves to Fratton Park in a permanent contract following an 18-month spell at the Stadium of Light. O'Brien contributed 12 goals and 5 assists in 65 appearances on Wayside, including 5 goals in 11 games during the current campaign. Christian Speakman said Aiden's contract was due to expire this summer and although he had impactful moments throughout the season, he has consistently voiced his desire to play regular football. We feel this move gives him the best opportunity to secure more playing time whilst also supporting his career in the long term and we wish him well for the future. Now this is something that I really, really do rate and I love the way that we're going about our business and that is every player that's basically got six months left on the contract, you know, i.e. Tom Flanagan as well, but we will get to that as well. You know, for me, Aidan O'Brien, it was definitely the right move. It was the more obvious one out of the two between Flanagan and O'Brien and who we should definitely get rid of. Because O'Brien, yes, he works hard. He's a nuisance. And I do like what he brought to the side, but he never started. And half the time we're playing him out of position. We're just using him as a bit of a sort of a doorstop at times, just to, you know, plug a gap uh, when we needed a little bit of something. It, and we didn't really play him to his strengths. It has to be said, probably slightly unfair on him. But what the club are doing is they're seeing, you know, in six months' time, the goal is to get ourselves to the championship. And they're probably thinking, in six months' time, or should we really be renewing this guy's contract? If we are going to the championship, will he be playing in the championship? He's barely playing in League One. Let's cut ties now. Perfect. They've done it in a classy manner. Same with Flanagan. You know, could he play in the championship? I don't think he could. Um, but does that mean that we're really gambling on the fact that we are going to be going up to the championship because I don't know whether we will. <laughs> well, no one knows whether we will. But um, I like what they're doing. They're trying to make at least a little bit of money. They will make at least a little bit of something, you would think, off these transfers. Even, you know, the Tom Flanagan one included. Six months down, uh, down the road would be left making nothing. And, you know, Tom Flanagan for League One is a decent player. Um, but we will get on to Tom Flanagan as well, of course. He has... Gone to Shrewsbury. Didn't expect it at all. Half ten at night it was announced. I did mention it in yesterday's video. In the video I did make really, really late last night. You know, it was it was announced, I think it was at half ten. And uh, then immediately I'm thinking, shit, we, we need a centre-back. Surely we've got something that up our sleeve. Unfortunately, we didn't. But when you put it this way, yeah, we, we, before the January transfer window had begun, we had, of course, Tom Flanagan and we didn't have Danny Bart. So, essentially, we put in Danny Bart and got rid of Tom Flanagan. So, really... On paper and numbers-wise, we do have the exact same amount of centre-backs we had going into the January transfer window. So is it the end of the world, considering we had that amount of centre-backs going into the January transfer window anyway? No, it isn't the end of the world. But if you do look at the centre-backs we do have, uh, it, it doesn't make for good reading particularly. Well, say it doesn't make for good reading. What I mean by it is numbers and strength and depth. What I might, sorry, what I might mean by that is um, if we want to play two at the back in terms of a back four and have two centre-backs, then, yeah, maybe we do have just about enough cover. But, as we've seen, 
this, the players that we've got and the type of players that we've got and the system we have been playing, granted we don't have a manager right now, so we don't know whether they're going to want to play three at the back or a wing-back system, but we've seen how, how, uh, how good that option is for us. When we play three at the back, when we play the wing-back system, we're very, very good. And that's when you need a lot of strength in depth when it comes to centre-backs. And we don't have that. So we have Danny Bart, who has just joined. We have Callum Doyle, who's an 18-year-old, who granted, I think he's going to have potential to go on to be a fantastic player. He is a good player right now. But yeah, 18 years of age, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of pressure to put on his shoulders. I'm not saying he can't handle it, but still 18 years of age. You've got Bailey Wright, who's currently short-term injured, but he's constantly picking up knocks here and there. You've got Jamali, who was out for what, over a year, who hasn't played a competitive game for us. Jordan Willis, who's out for the season and has been out for the entirety of the season. Um, and, you know, we, we got rid of the likes of Oli Younger as well, which I don't think I've really mentioned on the channel since he left. Uh, he went out to Doncaster, which was probably the, the right move because he's at an age where he needed fo first in football. It, I think it was too good to play in our academy, but maybe just not about good enough to get into the first team as much as I liked Oli Younger. You know, so we're really, really lacking, really lacking in, in that uh, in that defensive, in that centre-back role. But uh, hopefully... We managed to get a bit of a system and something going. You know, Danny Bart and and uh, Doyle. Hopefully, they gel because for large parts of the season, we need to remember. You know, as poor as Flanagan has been in recent weeks, Flanagan and Doyle have made a very, very good partnership at the back. A very, very good partnership. But I've also said before when I've made you know sort of preferred 11s in match previews and stuff. You know, when I've tried to do a back three, I think it could easily be one of the best defenses in the league with a back three of Danny Bart in the middle. Doyle on one side and Bailey Wright on the other, and then win backs. I think that could very, very easily be the best um, uh, uh, defensive lineup in the league. But it, whether we can play that and whether we are going to play that and whether these players can keep fit, that's a whole other thing. But we will have a look at Sunderland's statement surrounding Tom Flanagan. So Sunderland AFC can confirm that Tom Flanagan has joined Shrewsbury Town. The Northern Ireland International leaves Wayside on a permanent basis and joined Steve Cottrell's side on a two and a half year deal. An EFL Trophy winner in 2021, Flanagan moved to the Stadium of Light in 2018 and represented the club on 115 occasions. Christian Speakman said Thomas played his part this season to ensure we head into the remainder of the campaign competing at the top end of the division. But his contract expires in the summer and this move represents a great opportunity for him to secure his long-term future. He has led by example throughout his time at the club and we wish him well in the next chapter of his career. So pretty much what I alluded to earlier regarding the whole six-month thing, when players are running out of contracts, you know, Christian Speakman there, you know, he's saying that Tom Flanagan, he wanted those reassurances for his family and everything, which, of course, you absolutely understand. I get that 100%, but we couldn't give him those reassurances because maybe, you know, maybe if we knew that we we're going to be staying in League One next year, maybe we would have offered him another, you know, 12-month contract or, or you know, year-and-a-half contract or what have you. Uh, but we don't know that, and we are currently in a position to really push for promotion, um, and that's why I think it's probably the best, uh, the best um, decision to... Uh, let Tom Flanagan go. Unfortunately, we didn't bring in a replacement, as I say. But I do understand the reasoning and the thoughts behind it. So we are all the best at Tom Flanagan. Like like I said in yesterday's video, I think his first couple of years with us, I really didn't like him as a player. I really didn't. And I think he does throw his toys out the pram a little bit. I did say in the game against Pompey when we even won 1-0, if you look back at that match review, I said there was something up with Tom Flanagan. Even though we won 1-0, I was buzzing with the win. Um, for me... He was uh, he was very poor in that game, and he was. Um, oh, sorry, I don't think I made a match review to that game, but I, I did allude to that that game in. Um, I think it was the preview to the Bolton game. But yeah, but Tom Flanagan for me in that game, he just it was. It seemed to be in a bit of a huff, and his attitude seemed a little bit off. And now he's left, so it kind of adds up a little bit to me, really. But yeah, now moving into players coming in. Of course, we did bring in both Jermaine Defoe and Jay Matete. Now, Jay Matete for me. You know, as I mentioned, again, I'm going to keep on saying that same uh, that same sentence as I alluded to in yesterday's video. But yeah, Jay Matete, he uh, has been, he's been looked at by championship clubs. He's very, very highly rated. Only a really young lad, a combative, energy-driven uh, central midfielder. He isn't a big lad. He's not the kind of big brick shithouse, but more of a sort of, you know, um, if you watch, or, or, you know, COD's vlogs, uh, a really good lad. Um, he's a Fleetwood uh, vlogger. Uh, really good little YouTuber, and uh, he was kind of showing his uh, his thoughts in a video last night. Go and watch it; I highly recommend it. Surrounding Jay Matete, but you know, even though I've seen him quite a few times before, and I do think he's a great player, but I think the way he described him 
uh, COD's vlogs. I think it was uh, really accurate, saying, you know, yes, he is a big sort of, well, not big, sorry, but a, a more physical engine, pacey, uh, sort of a driven central midfielder. He isn't the sort of Fabinho, you know, the big brick shit house. He's more of a Kante, if that makes sense. He's everywhere, constantly in your face, constantly pressing, but he loves to get forward, to drive in the box. He can chip him with goals and assists. So having him next to someone like Daniel, who who's also an absolute workhorse, it could be it could be a really really good little partnership there. But although in saying that, two young lads, I would have preferred a little bit more experience. But it doesn't look like anything phases him this lad, this Jay Matete. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at the uh, Sunil statement for Jay Matete. So Sunil FC is delighted to announce the deadline day signing of Jay Matete. The central midfielder has signed a four and a half year deal at that stadium of light, arriving from Fleetwood Town for an undisclosed fee. A mainstay in the Cods Army starting lineup, Matete has made 25 appearances for the Lancashire-based side during the current campaign. The 20-year-old who started his career at Reading also spent time on loan at Grimsby Town last season, featuring 20 times and scoring three goals. Matete said, I'm delighted to sign for a club of this stature and I can't wait to get started. Everything happened so quickly, but it's brilliant to get the deal done and I'm excited for what the future holds. I've watched the club from a young age and I'm looking forward to getting out there at the stage of my light in front of the supporters. Christian Speakman said, Jay is a dynamic and versatile midfielder and we are delighted to welcome him to Sunderland AFC. He is a highly sought after talent and throughout the season he has attracted admirers from the Premier League and the Championship, which not only highlights the level of his performances, but also his outstanding potential. We believe that we have the optimal environment in place to maximise his ability and we look forward to supporting him in his development as he takes the next step in his career. So as you can see there, a four and a half year deal, which is something we do not give out lightly under the current regime anyway. Usually, you know, if it's a very clearly a League One signing, then we usually give out a sort of one and a half year deal, you know, uh, or, or even just a one year deal to certain players, two years maximum. But this really shows that we, uh, we're excited about the potential of this lad. And again, if we don't go up this year, we might end up getting offers for him because, you know, Premier League teams... Championship teams have been after him, and we will get a hefty sum, or a decent sum as well, which I don't want to talk about now, he's only just frigging signed, but I'm saying, you know, that's why you get you get players down on a long-term deal, because then t teams, if they do, if they, oh, sorry, if they are interested in him, they have to pay over the odds, they have to, so uh, yeah, it's a really, really good sign, I'm really, really pleased with it, I really am, I didn't expect it, came out of left field a little bit, sort of halfway through yesterday, mid-afternoon, and the rumours started to start around, Jay Matetti, and I thought, go on, this is going to be a class signing, because before that, even I think it was earlier in the day or earlier in the week, there was a lot of rumours that he was going to be joining a championship club and that just hasn't somehow materialised and he ends up at Sunderland, which I am not going to complain about at all. Four and a half year deal, Jay Matete, brilliant, brilliant young player, very exciting young player. Again, I would have maybe preferred, not instead of Jay Matete, but maybe as well as, um, I would have liked a, you know, a big, strong, uh, maybe experienced head in the middle, not like a Corey Evans when I say experienced. I mean, just someone who has you know, done the sort of dirty in this league, could do the dirty work. But Matete, even though he isn't, you know, six foot five, six foot six, he can do the dirty. He's got a leap on him, decent aerial ability, considering he isn't a huge lad, really, really physical. And, and I love that. Really love that. Absolute workhorse. Love it. Now to the big one. Jermaine Defoe, you know, I've absolutely battered it. I've done four or five videos surrounding Jermaine Defoe. But, uh, but yeah, so, so last night, it was about, well, I think it was one in the morning where Sunderland simply uh, tweeted out just saying, you up. And I was there laying in bed and I thought, oh, for God's sake, they're going to do it. They're going to do it, aren't they? They're going to break me off at this time of night. A few moments later, they posted the video as well as the statement. And um, yeah, I, I was nearly in tears. I was nearly in tears. Probably delirious from how frigging tired I was. But yeah, I was nearly in tears. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so we'll, again, we'll have a look at the, the big, big statement from the Jermaine Defoe signing. Sunderland AFC is delighted to welcome Jermaine Defoe back to the Stadium of Light, one of the greatest Premier League goalscorers of all time. The iconic striker returns to Wayside and signs an initial contract until the end of the 2021-22 campaign. Defoe arrives at a free transfer following his departure from Rangers Football Club, having helped the Scottish Giants to secure a record-breaking 55th league title, the club's first in a decade. Only eight players have scored more Premier League goals than the 39-year-old who has represented West Ham, Tottenham and Portsmouth in the top flight and netted over 300 senior goals during a glittering 23-year career. Signed from Toronto FC in January 2015, his first ball on Wayside was simply unforgettable as the striker cemented an enduring legacy on and off the pitch. 
Defoe scored in his home debut and notched against Swansea City, but it was on the 5th of April 2015 that he wrote his name into Wearside Folklore by netting one of the greatest ever stage of like goals in a 1-0 victory over Newcastle United. His unstoppable form continued throughout the 2015-16 and 2016-17 seasons as he scored 33 times in 74 games and inspired millions along the way by striking up an, sorry, an eternal bond with Bradley Lowry. Best mates, the duo walked out at the Stadium of Light together on numerous occasions and they captured hearts across the world in March 2017 when Lowry led out the three Lions at Wembley Stadium and Defoe scored on his coveted England return. The striker departed in June 2017 following the club's relegation from the Premier League and he joined AFC Bournemouth, returning to Dean Court 16 years after joining the Cherries on loan from West Ham United. Upon his return, Defoe said, I can't stop smiling because this is a special move for me for many reasons. I've had so many messages saying, remember when you said you would come back, as I said that I would one day and when I left, I wasn't ready to leave. I have a special bond with the fans here and the club is in a fantastic position to get promoted. I want to be part of more special times here and I'm looking forward to it. Christian Speetman added, We all know how highly regarded Jermaine is amongst our fan base and within the wider community. He returns at a crucial time in our season and we firmly believe that he can have a positive influence on and off the pitch. Jermaine's personality is infectious and his mindset is elite. He's a proven winner and a goal scorer and we are delighted to welcome him back to the Stadium of Light. Now the one thing that I do originally take from that is how it says he signed an initial contract at the Stadium of Light. So I think if he does continue or at least if he wants to continue to play at the end of this contract depending on what we're doing again, maybe it depends whether we're going up or what have you, or maybe... He does want to retire seeing us go up. So if he don't go up this year, he might do one more season. But yeah, the word initial for me has to be highlighted. Because I think that means there's something in there that shows that he, he may continue with us after this uh, th this spell with us. But it's just it's such a magical signing. It really is. I'm a huge, huge fan of Defoe, as is every Sunderland fan. Absolutely love him. And, you know, alluding to the... You know, it, it is his bond and his relationship he had with Radalari. And I made a video on that uh, years ago now. And I think I actually got quite teary uh, in front of the camera. But it was just, it was so inspiring and what an amazing guy. And as Christian Speakman said, you know, not only has he been there and done that, his mindset is elite. It actually is elite. You don't score the amount of goals and have the career that he has had if you don't have that elite mindset. Just keep yourself as fit as he does at 39 years of age and to have that mindset, this constant winning mentality of, oh, I will score a goal today, which he has done countless times. I don't care whether he's 39 years old or 19 years old. He can be an invaluable asset to this club for the, for the remainder of the season. To be around, you know, like Ross Stewart, give him tips and, and kind of be alongside him. And even to play alongside, you know, Ross Stewart. What, what a partnership that could potentially be as well. Don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting Jermaine Ford to come on the pitch and bump past three, four, five, six defenders and then put it in the top corner. I mean, he might. You never know. But, <laughs> but, that, but he's so unbelievably intelligent on and off the ball. Do you know what I mean? We, we know what he's like. I don't know why I'm trying to describe Jermaine Defoe to you because you know, it's, you know what you get with him. You know, his movement off the ball, it is ability to find space when it looks impossible, to find those little pockets of, uh, of space in between defences. He can do it time and time again, regardless of his age. You don't lose that knack for being a goal scorer and I believe he can be absolutely vital for us, regardless of his age. Absolutely regardless of his age. Uh, there was a lot of rumours originally that he may come as a player coach or... Play a manager, it's absolutely not a manager's role. I think he may end up staying on as a coach after the season, which I'd absolutely take as well. I mean, who wouldn't want someone like Jermaine Defoe around the training ground and around your academy lads? It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But yeah, so that is pretty much it for this video. Apart from, I will just quickly uh, go over and summarise our transfer business and uh, what I generally think of it. I did take a screenshot of, uh, yeah, there we go. So this is what we've done in the January transfer window. And do you deem this to be success? Sorry, successful? We brought in Jack Clark on loan, Patrick Roberts, Danny Bart, Jay Matete, Trey Hume and Jermaine Defoe. Now out, we've got rid of Denver Hume, Aidan O'Brien, Josh Short, Tom Flanagan. And of course, we uh, got rid of... Um, Oliver Younger as well, but I mean, he wasn't really a first-teamer. I mean, nor was Josh Hawks, really. But even so, for me, I see that as a relatively successful January transfer window. I do, because if you look, Denver Hume, injury-prone, um, and, and he, he wasn't really 
playing particularly well when he was given the opportunities at the back end of his Sunderland career anyway. So it's probably the right time to get rid of him. Probably made a little bit of money off him. Aidan O'Brien, he was coming on for the last sort of three, four minutes of games and that was really it. Uh, Josh Hawkes, for me, and I was saying this to Michael Bowers at the Bolton game when I was uh, with Michael, I was saying if Josh Hawkes was three, four years younger, I would have been livid that we got rid of him. But considering he's 23 years of age, we're still sending him out on loan here and there. He needs to be playing football. It is far too old in terms of not getting first team football. So I understand that. And Tom Flanagan as well, debatable whether that should or shouldn't have happened. But I also understand it given he only had six months left on his contract. So for me, I, I think it is a, a really good transfer window. I do. Uh, for me, I think when you start playing the likes of Troy Hume, give him an opportunity rather than you know, shoehorning certain players in uh, into that right back role or a right wing back role, I'd like to see him a little bit more. I say a little bit more, I'd like to just see him. Do you know I mean? <laughs> I'd like to just freaking see him. Uh, there was actually a little bit of rumours as well, late last night, of course, when Tom Flanagan had gone to Shrewsbury. There was a lot of rumours that uh, Lyndon Gooch was also in talks with Shrewsbury, but he turned it down. Now, for me, I have a love-hate relationship with Lyndon Gooch. On you know, one minute, I think he's class. The next, he's the worst footballer I've ever seen in my life. You know, he's, just so, he can, he's just so inconsistent. But, but you know, Lyndon Gooch is an adopted Macam. His family are all up here, all of the kids in school and everything. And, you know, he, he loves the club. And uh, I, I do get it why he wouldn't want to go. Uh, but and I do also believe that Lyndon Gooch does have something to offer us. That's the only thing. I do, as poor, and I know people really get on Lyndon Gooch's back. I get it. I understand why. You know, I'm not blind. But, uh, but I, I do believe he can offer us something. I really do. Even if he doesn't start games, I do think he can offer us something. But, yeah, so that is... The January transfer window rounded up. What do you guys think of Sunderland's business? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming.